Hi guys, Kubis Kinya. I'm a certified financial planner and if you've ever wondered what's the difference between medical aids or what option is best suited for you and your family, stick around for medical aids in a nutshell. <music> This video clip reminds me of me and my brother. I would usually suggest we do something very stupid. Something would go wrong and in some way I would escape and he would take the fall for it. Unfortunately in South Africa we can no longer depend on the government if we require medical cover. And that's why we have to take out our own medical aids. If you feel like skipping through the video, be sure to check the description. I've marked the four main different options and you can skip to the option that you are interested in. When choosing a medical aid, there's three things you should ask yourself to determine what option is best suited for you. Number one is do you require comprehensive hospital cover? Number two, do you use chronic medication and do you require cover for it? And lastly, do you require out of hospital benefits for your day to day needs such as dentistry, optometry, doctor's visits and so on. If you've determined what you need, now we can look at what your options are. There's four main options to choose from. Number one is a network option. This option is perfect if affordability is a major determining factor. The premium is determined according to an income scale. The more you earn, the more you'll pay. The less you earn, the less you'll pay. This option does come with significant limits and exclusions, which may lead to the member being liable for part of the bill. Keep in mind that each individual scheme may be different. Let's look at the pros and cons. The pros, it does cover you in a private hospital. It also gives you cover for chronic medication and it offers you day-to-day -day benefits. Some even offer you unlimited doctor's visits, medication, etc. But don't let this fool you, it is usually limited to certain network providers. Let us look at the cons. Although it does cover you in a private hospital, it does come with significant limits and exclusions. It does cover you in a private hospital and it also covers you for day-to-day -day needs, but it is usually restricted to certain network providers. The doctor that you're familiar with or the dentist, etc. might not be in the network they provide. The second option is a hospital plan. This option covers you comprehensively in hospital and it doesn't come with all the limits and exclusions as the network option. But there is no out of hospital cover for day to day needs. Let us look at the pros and cons. The pros. It covers you comprehensively in a private hospital without those limits and exclusions as the network option. It covers you for chronic medication as well. The cons. There is no out of hospital benefits. If you require more comprehensive cover in and out of hospital, you might want to consider option number three and number four, which is both full medical aids. They frankly don't differ in any major factor when it comes to in hospital or chronic medication. The only difference comes in in the day to day or the out of hospital benefits. With option number three, the traditional full medical aid, your out of hospital benefits are split into different sections. For example, you'll have a different section for doctor's visits, optometry, dentistry, and so on. Whereas with option number four, the new generation full medical aid, they will pull all your funds into one account called your medical savings account. This allows the member more control over where they spend their funds. The benefit here is also that if you haven't used all of your savings at the end of the year, it will be transferred over to the next year. On the traditional full medical aid, if you haven't used all of your benefits at the end of the year, it will be lost. Now a lot of people felt that they do not use certain benefits, for example optometry, and felt that they are paying for something that they are not getting value from. And that is why the new generation full medical aid was created, to allow members to choose where they spend their funds. And if they haven't used all their funds, it will be transferred over to the next year and not lost. The new generation full medical aid is also a bit more popular than the traditional plan, although the traditional full medical aid does offer you sometimes more benefit, it is also very expensive. Let us look at the pros and cons for option number three, the traditional full medical aid. It offers you comprehensive cover in a private hospital. It also offers you cover for chronic medication and it does offer you day-to-day -day benefits. The cons. If you haven't used all of your benefits at the end of the year, it will be lost. It also tends to be a bit more expensive than the new generation full medical aid. Now let us look at the pros and cons for option number four, the new generation full medical aid. The pros. It offers you comprehensive cover in a private hospital. 
It offers you cover for chronic medication and it also covers you for out of hospital benefits in the form of a savings account. This allows you more control over where you spend your funds and it also allows you to transfer the unused savings account over to the next year. The cons. If your savings is depleted, you will have no more benefits out of hospital. Certain new generation full medical aids will come with a threshold. Now what this means is, if your medical savings account is depleted, you will move into what is called a self-payment gap. In the self-payment gap, you will have to pay for all of your day-to-day -day claims out of your own pocket until you've reached the set threshold. Only then will the medical aid again start to pay for day-to-day -day claims out of the above threshold benefit. Keep in mind that there are also limits with the above threshold benefits. This can be beneficial for some people, but in most cases, people reach the threshold at the end of the year. This means that they don't really have a chance to enjoy the above threshold benefits. It is also important to note that certain claims do count towards closing the self-payment gap and others not. And this tends to be confusing, as some do count towards closing the gap and other claims do not count. Late joint penalties and waiting periods. Now, the Medical Schemes Act introduced open enrollment. This means that no medical aid may refuse you cover, but they are allowed to impose certain waiting periods or penalties. Late joint penalties will apply to anyone who is 35 years and older and has had a break in membership since 31 March 2001. The late joint penalties are determined according to a specific table. Now in the description I've linked a guideline as well as a calculator, so be sure to check that out. I've also added a summary of any waiting periods that might be applicable when applying. In 2004, the Council of Medical Schemes published the National Health Reference Price List. The idea of this was to give healthcare providers and medical schemes a guideline to what rate is fair to charge for services. Certain medical aids have negotiated their own rates with healthcare providers. You might have seen that certain medical aids say they will pay 100% of MSR, which is medical scheme rate. This basically means that they will pay 100% of the negotiated rate. The same scheme might also say that they will pay 200% of MSR, which means that they will pay double the negotiated rate. If the healthcare provider does charge more than the negotiated rate or the rate that the medical scheme is willing to pay, the member will be liable for that portion. You might want to consider gap cover, which is separate from your medical aid. Gap cover usually covers the difference between what the medical aid is willing to pay and the healthcare provider charges. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if so, smash that like button, subscribe and share it. Thanks to everyone who has commented, shared or even just a like. It is really much appreciated. If you require more info on waiting periods, late joiner penalties or which option is truly best suited for you and your family, you're welcome to give us a call. My contact details are in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you!